I went ahead and made a chicken smoothie of my own and I wanted to see what is in what it. It is very warm. <laughs> I will kill you. Welcome to the Logo Spill Bar. Where the drinks are strong, the tea is hot, and the guests are... I'm your bartender and host, Johnny Sibley, and today I'm joined by a queer multi-hyphenate with a recent Emmy nom and unlimited thirst traps actor, writer, comedian, and my favorite Hollywood himbo, please welcome Joel Kim Booster. Yeah. Come on down. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm better now that you're here. Thank you. <laughs> I made you this comically large Oof. Bloody Mary virgin for Bloody Mary. Mm -hmm. I don't drink. She's... She doesn't drink. You don't drink? Mm-mm. I, I haven't that. I haven't been drunk in like literal years. Wow. Yeah. That that must be so nice. It does feel pretty good yeah. in the mornings. Oh wait, let's do a cheers. Oh please. Oh my god, does that have a chicken to I mean it, it has like I... a I specifically requested spicy with an appetizer. Because okay. that's how I like my bloodies. <laughs> well, cheers to that. Okay, so before we get into it, the sun has set on Fire Island. <laughs> yeah, finally. <laughs> but before we truly like let the sun go down, mm -hmm. I wanna ask what is the meaning of chosen family? Oh my god. <laughs> this question. This what question. It, what does pride mean to you? I will kill you. <laughs> I will kill you. Um, do you really want me to answer that? Or can they just no. go and Google my entire press tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And get it, the you're, it's that. like your Lady Gaga, like, there could be uh, yeah, 100. <laughs> Listen, I have so much sympathy for her now, though, yeah. because the thing is, is like, you do a, like a press junket and you're talking to dozens of reporters back to back to back. Yeah. And if you try to say something different for all of them, you you're... will lose your, your mind. You can't, it's just yeah. impossible. And so if you land on a great line, like there could be a hundred people in a room. <laughs> you're like, you're, I'm using you're, it. I'm, you're gonna use it over and over and over again. Yeah. So I did peep a little announcement. Yeah that you're working on a new queer rom-com called Again, Again, Again. Yep. So this is kind of like a Spill exclusive. What can you tell us about it? It is a lot different than Fire Island. Fire Island, I think because it was my first project mm -hmm. and because of the nature of like, there not being a lot of gay rom-coms mm -hmm. when it came out, I, I felt like I needed it to be a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Yeah. And this one is for me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I love wedding movies. Yeah. I love wedding comedies. It is a wedding comedy mm -hmm. um, about uh, an already established relationship. It's not necessarily a rom-com this time around. It yeah. is about an established relationship between um, a well-meaning, stable, uh, nice guy and his mentally ill boyfriend mm. um, that may or may We've not there. <laughs> ruin the wedding. Um, and it is very much ripped from the headlines of my own relationship oh. and the many, many, many things that I have put my um, nice, normal brand boyfriend through uh, <laughs> at weddings and other ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, I can't wait to see it. We all can't wait to see it. And we're all going to love it and support it. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Like, that's the thing. I hope we are reaching a point in terms of queer representation mm -hmm. where there is enough things out there that you can honestly just ignore it if it doesn't sound like it's for you. Well, that, yeah. I mean, that's, that is the, the goal That's is like the, the ignoring it part, but you know, gays. I mean, you've been on Twitter. Yes. Sorry, oh. X. What are we calling it? Don't dead name Twitter. <laughs> uh, nice. um, no. My thing is, is like I had a lot of like uh, criticism from people who hate rom coms for mm, Fire Island. Oh, you know, and yeah. it was always like when I would read those reviews or those comments, I'd always be like, well, you sh this, this what this wasn't for you. for you ever. Right. Gay or otherwise. Yeah. you like, hey, that's not for me. I don't mm -hmm. have to watch it just because there are gay people in it because there are so many other things happening. Yeah. I mean, that might be a pipe dream, but. What is your favorite rom-com of all time and why? My Best Friend's Wedding. Easy. <sighs> Easy, easy, easy. Mm. I think um, it just is a combination of so many things that I love. I think it's really funny, mm. first off. It's got the rom, it's got the com, <laughs> it's got, you know, two it, really Musical integral bits. part yeah. of uh, romantic comedy that sometimes is missing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think for me, it's like a really complicated, layered story mm. if you really are, are paying attention. And I think it's great that like 
at the time that it was made, Julia Roberts was America's sweetheart, yeah. widely beloved by almost everybody. And then she decided to do this movie where she is a heinous villain. Yeah. And I think it was not something that anybody saw coming. So mm -hmm. I think like contextually in the time that it came out, it's so interesting and such an anomaly. And to root against Julia Roberts is it's hard. It's hard. Would you say that you're the gay Nora Ephron? <laughs> um, I wouldn't say that. Mm. If somebody else wants to say that, I would. I'll say it. I'd gladly accept it. I'll say it. I love Nora Ephron. She's a huge inspiration for me. Yeah. You can't really say it after one movie. <laughs> I think it's a little premature. Well, now there's another coming. Um, you know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Give me three, and then we'll we'll revisit the okay, question. Okay, great. For sure. You co-host the recently released Freeform show Chrissy and Dave Dine Out alongside Chrissy Teigen and David Chang. Yes. Now that you're being able to eat Michelin star food and being paid for it with hot celebrities, do you feel like you've unlocked a new level of fame? No. <laughs> no. Because I'm still the sidekick on a <laughs> on a show. Yeah, you know, like yeah. I it's pretty much within uh, it's definitely in my lane that yeah. I've been existing in for a Period. long time. It doesn't. I love the show. I, yeah. you know, I loved working on it. It was obviously an honor to get to eat at some of these restaurants yeah. around LA. But yeah, I don't necessarily think it's like changing the game for me as a <laughs> as a gay sidekick. Yeah, <laughs> it looks to camera. I love it. While shooting Chrissy and Dave dine out, did any of the famous dinner guests say anything so shocking that you almost choked? Um. Not really. I, I'm not easily shocked, first of all. Um, but I think like most everyone kept it pretty above board. There was in the first episode, Molly McNearney, who is Jimmy Kimmel's wife and also the executive producer of his show, did share with us a story of her first blowjob. Uh, and uh, sort of uh, the mishaps that happen um, with that kind of story. And um, that was great. Yeah. I think like the fact that we were able to get that out of her. I mean, the wine was flowing. They mm. were at a, a close friend's restaurant. It was late in the night. We all loosened up for that episode. We love a loosening up. Mm, very important. As the host of this food show, I do need to ask you about something that um, I saw and I was very perplexed about. You were mentioned in an interview saying something that Chrissy Teigen calls a chicken smoothie. Yeah. yeah. So allegedly for the viewers, you microwave a chicken breast, uh -huh. and then you blend it with uh -huh. water till it's silky smooth. Sometimes some olive oil. And then you drink, and sometimes some olive oil. Yeah, if I'm okay. feeling frisky, you know. What the f I think the last time I drank this was on camera for Chrissy and Dave. Mm -hmm. But this was something I was doing when I was like very, very strict about my diet and, mm. and my calories and my macros and things like that. And I was trying to bulk, but do it in a, like a lean bulk, mm -hmm, um, yeah. not a dirty bulk. And I, um, <laughs> we hate a dirty bulk. <laughs> yeah. And it was just like something I read on Reddit, yeah. like a bodybuilding Reddit forum, oh. um, that, you know, old school bodybuilders used to do yeah. to get their calories. And for me, like at the time, especially mm -hmm. was very utilitarian. I was very, I was like super busy and mm -hmm. super like I need the protein now yeah. and I need it like in 90 seconds. Um, and so <laughs> got it. I got it that way. I don't, I haven't done this in a while because I just, I genuinely don't feel as crazy about my body mm. as I used to. Mm -hmm. um, I think part of that's being in a relationship. <laughs> um, yeah. But I also realized that like, I didn't have to be that strict and still feel good about myself. Yeah. And listen, like if I were cast in a Marvel movie tomorrow, would I be drinking the chicken smoothies again? Probably, With but no side one's of asked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no one's asked. So um, I don't, at this point, I bring it up mostly to yeah. troll people. Okay. Well, I'd love for you disgusting. to try. Um, I went ahead and made, <laughs> this is so warm. I went ahead and made a chicken smoothie of my own and I wanted to see what is in this. It thought. is very warm. <laughs> this is fresh out of the microwave. <laughs> <clears throat> so this is actually really good oh. um because it's clearly a chicken that they got with seasoning uh -huh. and like, like from the store from the store yeah, yeah, yeah. mine was truly <laughs> out of the freezer into the microwave then into the blender wait it, so hold on out of the freezer then into the microwave mm -hmm. how long was it in the microwave like six minutes However six long minutes it okay to, okay to so it got thawed and yeah. then okay yeah. I, did you ever have salmonella poisoning not to my knowledge <laughs> not to my knowledge <laughs> Thank you.
You've said before that guys on Grindr have a legal obligation to tell you they know who you are. Yeah. It's I have like to the say, cops. You, if, you're, yeah. if you are a police officer, you have to tell me. <laughs> and if you know who I am and are familiar with my work, you also have to tell me. Yeah. So I disagree. Um, my thing is, is uh, I don't care if they do or not. Mm -hmm. It doesn't affect me necessarily. Yeah. But like there are situations that yeah. have occurred where as they're leaving my house post hookup, they'll be like, and by the way, I love your work. Yeah. And then I, my reaction is always the same where I'm like, I wish you would have told me that before because I wouldn't have been such a f***ing freak um, <laughs> if I knew that you knew who I was. Oh. Like there's like, I still want to have anonymous sex yeah. and have it be truly anonymous and yeah. not imagine that I'll be someone's like story Ooh. eventually. Like yeah. they'll see me on so TV you're like, and be if, like, oh, I, I that be guy story, and he I'm... was a real weirdo. Yeah. Oh. In <laughs> You know, so you want to you want to be producing the story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like if they if they are up front and they like know who I am, then I'm like, I just keep that in the back of my head. And mm. I'm like, all right, let's be normal. So we can do two positions and that's exactly <laughs> in and out in 20 minutes or less. OK, because I had someone I hooked up with someone once and then they told me afterward and I was like, oh, that's so nice. I'm so glad he didn't ruin it in the beginning. Well, it, we were also in the steam room, so I feel like. <laughs> I feel like it would have killed the vibe in the, yeah, you no, know what definitely. I mean? From one sex positive king to another. I love how open you are about your sexual escapades. As a professional hoe, what is one sex act you think everyone needs to try at least once? Hmm, that's interesting. I, I don't necessarily think, I think everyone should try bottoming. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I think more specifically, I think bottoms should top more and and top should bottom more because mm. I think that there is a, an essential piece of the puzzle you're missing. Yeah. Like versatility, even if it's just a couple times, yeah. really does help you understand the experience of the person on the other end of your body. So I think uh, people- <laughs> Walk a mile and someone exactly. else's hole. Um, especially I think tops, I think tops um, especially need to experience that a yeah. little bit more to understand <laughs> you know, sort of the ins and outs and the, <laughs> the, uh, you know, like yeah, yeah. how to, how to, you know, be gentle with someone at first and listen then how to, to be rough with someone. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Listen to the body. I feel like bottoms are better tops. <laughs> I said and it. also to understand the work that goes into the prep uh -huh. to do it. Yeah. Like, I think if more bottoms had spent 45 minutes until the water is clear and then had someone cancel on them, mm. they would think twice. <laughs> So I'm sorry to break the Cardinal Housewives law here, but we need to talk about the husband. You have said publicly that you plan to marry your current boyfriend, John Michael Kelly, which I love. You've even joked about proposing with a cock ring. <laughs> so do tell, when is this cock ring proposal happening? John Michael Cena, actually. This is something that the press gets wrong a lot. They pull from his Instagram and he has a different last name on his Instagram than his actual last name. Um, Give his government name to camera. John Michael said <laughs> Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly when. Yeah. Because the fact is, is that like, I know I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this person. He knows I'm going to spend the, like, he's going to spend the rest of his mm -hmm. life with me. And we don't necessarily, there's no like, rush rush to actually like have it legally recognized mm. um we will eventually i think like i'm nervous about it going away mm. <laughs> eventually so we'd like to get in under the wire certainly <laughs> um we'll see how this next election goes i guess yeah. um what this relationship has really made me think about in terms of marriage is like marriage has always felt for a lot of people mm -hmm. um like sort of the given end game of any relationship and it's really made me think about what a public declaration of my commitment to this person actually means mm -hmm. um and it's it's that it definitely still seems important to me at least um but there's no rush to do it because it's not going to change anything for us yeah well we are holding space for you here at the Logo Spill Bar. Come have the after party here. I was about to say, maybe this is where our reception will be. <laughs> Chicken mm. milkshakes for everyone. Cheers to that. <laughs> Why was it so hard to pick up all of a know, sudden? it's gonna be inside you. Mm. Yum. <laughs>